Hi and welcome to the second video on the topic of uh, theory of machines. Uh, this video is in continuation uh, with the first video on mechanisms and machines. In this we will talk about the or we start this video by, by talking about the types of constrained motion. We talked about what a constrained motion is. Constraint means restricted or definite in a particular direction irrespective of the uh, direction or type of force. Now broadly speaking there are three types of constrained motion. You have completely constrained motion. Then you have incompletely constrained motion. And the third one is successfully constrained. Now what is the difference between these three types of constrained motion? Uh, let us start off with the completely constrained motion. Now in this, when the motion between the two elements of a mechanism is in a definite direction and it is independent on the direction of force applied. For example, we have two components like this. You have a box. This box has a square hole inside it. So this is the square hole. Okay. And through this square hole you have a re rectangular slab passing through. Okay. Now this rectangular slab, this is the rectangular slab I'm talking about. This can only reciprocate inside this uh, re rectangular box with a square hole in this inside it so even if i uh, try to rotate it it can only move back and forth it cannot rotate okay the next thing comes incompletely constrained motion in incompletely constrained motion the motion between the two elements of a mechanism is possible in more than one direction and it basically depends upon the direction of force applied so for example if you take let us take a simple body and through this body you have a circular hole. Circular hole means you have a circular shaft which fits in this circular hole. It's a through hole. Now you can have two kinds of motion. You can either rotate this shaft inside the circular hole or you can move it back and forth also. So if you are applying a torque it will rotate. If you are pushing it or pulling it, it will move back and forth in the shown direction. So in this, the motion is not in one particular direction. Rather than that, it is based upon, it, it is dependent upon the kind of force you are applying and is in more than one direction. So this becomes an incompletely constrained motion. Now let's come to the third one that is your successfully constrained motion. Now successfully means you already have an incompletely constrained motion but you make it a, const a, a, a completely constrained motion by some external means. For example, let's take a very common example of a fo footstep bearing. Now what is a footstep bearing? You have a journal. This is your journal. Okay. And this Oh, this is your bearing okay you have a vertical shaft which fits on top of this hemispherical shape so you have a shaft like this okay so shaft sits on top of this so the vertical load on this shaft is being taken by this bearing in this orientation the shaft can rotate as well as well it can move up and down okay so this is a or this is an incompletely constrained motion now if i want to make it a completely constrained motion what would i do and let me just drop off the writing over here okay if i have to make it a completely constrained motion so that uh, either this rotation is mitigated or this up and down vertical movement is mitigated 
what will I do? I will put let us let us try and mitigate this up and down vertical movement. Let me put a load, an axle load on top of this shaft which will stop this axial movement up and down within this journal. So now if you what whatever kind of uh, force you apply the motion will only be a rotational motion for this shaft within this bearing so now this has become completely constrained okay so this is what a successfully constrained motion is that is from an incompletely constrained motion you make it into a completely constrained motion by some external means in this case we applied an axial load on top of the vertical shaft